Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Another week, another Forsaken Tale. I cannot wait to talk to my next guest uh, today on the podcast. Uh, and from what I heard last week on the podcast, um, this person had painted a target on my back for the hey, yeah. 2023 yeah. haunt season uh, because I had I had listed Forsaken Lake, I think, at the bottom of our hype list from previous years experience mm -hmm. and, and that and that quickly changed in the in the review video but uh i'm sitting here with my buddy <laughs> my good friend the one that scared the shit out of me the most probably in forsaken like this year lobotomy lex how you doing i'm good i'm good i'm happy to be here it's kind of surreal because it's like i spent close to two years listening to the podcast and being like i wish i could be on there one day and i'm like I'm here. You're here. Oh my God. That means that means the world to me. I, I I said this before and I'll say it again, man. Um, you know, this 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 podcast for me was a great way to um use my platform to share stories, voices about the haunt community behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know. And that's one of my favorite things to do, man, is to is to take um some monsters, sit with them, chat with them, and and to get an an idea of their thought process going through the entire event as a whole um from a monster point of view you know you see it every day as a guest point of view and everything so now i, I like to turn the tables and, and see what the monster has to say um because in the end of the day you guys you guys are you guys are human too you know there's there's no question about it you guys you guys are human unless you unless you're a vampire you know i mean that's just that's just the way of life I mean, there's some of us, um, you know, some of us might be, you know, just because we we're more up in the night than we are in the day. <laughs> that's me for sure. Yeah. I know that's you, you know, and it's, it's freaking we live in the mm -hmm. night. We live in it. Um, So, you know, I, I have to start the, the show by saying, too, that um, Forsaken Lake this year was incredible. Um, it, it easily yeah. probably one of the best zones at any haunt that I went to this year. And that's, you know, the energy was there, yeah. you know, the, 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 everyone was just on board with it. everyone just seemed like they wanted to be there. They wanted to make it the best that they can yeah. for the 50th. And, and as a fan, just seeing that it, it was just incredible. And I, I want to say thank you for being part of that. Um, I had to give Forsaken its month, you know, February this month. I had to give them a month just to kind of talk about it. You know, something that we made in January is now coming back, of course, of our, our review of Knots and and just, you know, mm. the, the, the great things we had to say about the event overall, but the great things we really had to say about Forsaken. So thank you for being part of that. And thank you for, for scaring the shit out of me a few times this season. That That's always the best. <laughs> well, thank you. That... That honestly means a lot because, um, yeah, like going into Forsaken this year, because this is my first year on the streets just in general. I did a little bit elsewhere, but not really the full street experience. And this character that I played, uh, Clarissa Van Hoyt or The Florist, it technically is like a uh, OC or created character, which not straight up told me like what I talked about it last year, like. Mm -mm, we don't do that in the lake ghost town maybe but not in the lake dude and so i spent i kind of took that and ran with it i'm like all right i will make a character for the lake though and so i spent all the way up into like auditions i want to say daily just writing and tweaking this draft of this character and like drawing up designs and just putting everything i can into this character to make it like fit the lake and so the fact that like there's been like almost this cult following following for Zaken this year. And the fact that I got to be a part of that and it being my first year, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like kind of overwhelmed with love. But it's like, we feel it though. And 100% appreciate it. Oh man. Uh, you know, the lake, it, it was special this year. You guys had great leadership and charge. You guys had a great cast. You know, you guys oh really, God, yeah. 
took it to that next level where I never thought I would see Forsaken let go. And it did shocked me, surprised me, you know, and, 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 and really utilize the story and the, the space of that zone. I know it's not the, the biggest zone out of all of them, but you guys seriously know how to utilize the space very well and, and make everyone feel scared, you know, and that, and that's the best part is, you know, you're walking yeah. through this lake like area, which is, you know, the kind of the lake they built for, you know, silver bullet and, and bringing that kind of story to life of this lake has so many, uh, dark secrets from the past in it that a lot of these characters are trying to uh, share the story with other people and trying to get more people involved with the uh, with the story, which that's what I love is, is being kind of brought into that story as an outsider and kind of trying to fit my place and be like, well, how does this work? Like, they obviously want me to get in that lake and drown so I could be another Forsaken Soul the lake, yeah. you know, like, it's awesome like, to, to be really part of yeah, I know. I mean, is there? Uh, I mean, I, I I like to think there's just a huge rager at the bottom of the lake. Just you know, they're just trying to yeah. invite everyone over. You know, so I mean, that's that's what I like to think. But big party. yeah, big time. Yeah. yeah, we definitely had some of the best leadership, like for us with Jeremy and Geets being our cast leads. They like when I first found out we had them as our leads, I kind of knew we were in good hands just from. Deeds being this like legendary slider in the haunt community and being well known in Ghost Town and like running Ghost Town like a tight ship. And then Jeremy being a monster for years and then this being his first time like supervising us. I kind of felt safe knowing that, like, all right, these dudes aren't going to let us fall. They're not going to let anyone like mess up and slip through the cracks and just kind of turn a blind eye to stuff. They will tell us like when we're fucking up and like tell us how to fix it. And so I kind of knew, like, all right, we're going to be good here. But everyone in the lake had, like, such amazing energy this year and chemistry. Like, a lot. Some, I want to say two-thirds of the lake kind of knew each other from returning, but most of us were, like, fresh, brand new to this. So right. it kind of was, like, just barely meet these people and then get thrown into this scenario. We, right off the bat from Scare School, we all kind of clicked and had our own things going on. And everyone had like such unique and like drastically different energy that you can just look at anyone and be like, there's a whole thing going on over at this person. I want to know more about that. What the fuck's going on over here? I want to know more about you. Yeah. No, and, and that's what I, I think I love about um scare zones specifically at not scary farm is um uh, everyone kind of gets together and kind of uh you know is that like family like you know vibe where you know you you do want to build and, and eat off each other's energy and kind of you know build to something bigger and, and better like after the next scare it's like all right we did really good on that one how are we gonna approach this next mm -hmm. one keep going therefore and there you know and and i even saw a lot of that energy when it came time the procession you know that to me oh yeah i mean that was probably i'm not <laughs> even exaggerating that's probably the best viewing of the procession i've ever seen um everyone was so in sync everyone was just in it and 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 the energy was felt at the moments where the energy needed to be filled and 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 it was just one of those things where every show it didn't matter if you've seen it once or if you've seen it like 16 times it, it was just something that you had to see in person to just really admire mm -hmm. the beauty behind it you know that was just it was that good oh yeah 100 percent agree with like from scare school up until our final procession on Halloween, you could tell each one was different and we were just kept adding more and more of like our own flair to it to where it's like, it's still this like nice, like pristine line, like New Orleans style funeral march. But towards near the end, you can start to see and like kind of see the story of everyone's distinct character as we're walking down. And that's what I'd love to see. And even from like, us monster standpoint, I don't think there really was ever a procession where we kind of looked at each other and was like, oh, that felt off or I didn't feel right about that one. Like, right. Because I was part of the little, little secrets. I was part of the monsters that would sit behind the mausoleum after the procession and take the casket back. And we'd just be sitting there murmuring like, dude, that one was fucking great. Yeah, that was fucking nice. Like, yeah, man, a little behind the scenes for y'all didn't know, you know, once you only get that mm -hmm. here on this podcast right here is the behind the scenes look of it. Um, no, and, and that's what I loved about it is, is like, it, it felt like to me is every time that I saw it leading from, you know, opening night all the way to that mm -hmm. closing night, it just felt like it was getting better and better and better. And, 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 you know, I talked to Matt 
uh, about it uh, on the podcast last week, you know, and, and love another it. thing that I, I absolutely loved that I, that he told me about was, you know, if you kind of pay attention and look at the zone, a lot of the characters are kind of, they look the same. They kind of, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, multiple characters mm -hmm. that are kind of the same, you know, look the same, act the same, all that stuff. But I liked that this mm -hmm. year you guys all took it upon yourselves to be like, well, you know, we are the same character, but let's make ours different. Let's make ours stand out. Let's, let's do different characteristics mm -hmm. that it's like, oh, I like that guy over there. And then that guy's doing something, but they look the same, but they also, that's how you can tell them apart, you know? And that's what I love about exactly. that is to take, take that little concept and then brighten that world and, and make it bigger and mm -hmm. expand on that. That, I think that was really something that we took notice to this year for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, definitely, that was the talk we kind of had backstage before the season of, like, how are we going to make each character our own? Like, we all kind of sat down and figured out, like, what is this character we playing? How did they die? Why are they here? What are they about? Blah, blah, blah. So, like, that's really, like, I'm not throwing shade. I love, I've loved the lakes since it first came in, and I've always been a super fan of it. But up until this year, there kind of was, like, as you said, a lot of the same characters. And there kind of is that with every zone, but it really was like skeleton top hat number one, skeleton top hat number two, <laughs> skeleton top, top hat number three. Yeah. And well, this year, you know, there was multiples of us, like even my character, the florist, me and the other florist, Jeanette, which love her. She's an amazing person. Shout out Jeanette. But um, yeah, even me and her, even though we might look the same face wise, drastically different characters like even energy yeah. wise like she was more kind of like slow creepy will like sneak up and on you i was that loud ball of chaos you'd see from a mile away like Ugh. man it, it 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 almost scared me to the point and gave me ptsd of being in ghost town just hearing merrick across fog alley <laughs> and walking into forsaken now and hearing you from the other side of of forsaken i'm just like oh man we're in for it today and it's gonna be a fun one like it, it, such it, a huge I mean it, I it, it was worship amazing. Merrick. He is like one of my biggest inspirations. It, it was so good. It, it was to the point where I remember, uh, like <laughs> after one of the first or second weekends, you literally messaged us on Instagram, you know, <laughs> asking like, hey, dude, like I apologize if I if I got in your face and like I was loud and stuff, you know, if like if you if you know I'll, if, if it's a problem, like I'll stop. And I literally remember replying by like, I highly encourage it. Keep going. Like, I'm not mad at it one bit. Like, I encourage it. I think I think so many people are always intimidated by me because i'm so tall but mm -hmm. like i'm gonna put this out there right now and if and any, any monster watching you included don't be intimidated nine out of ten times you see me i will probably have a camera in my hand and that is stuff that i look for like you know interaction all that stuff don't be intimidated do the best you can. I, I, I legit, I'm legit when I say this, I want to be dropped. I want to be scared so bad that you drop mm -hmm. me. Like if anyone can accomplish oh, that, my goal. like, and, and no, I, I'm, I'm going to be serious. Like you scared the absolute fuck out of me this year. And it was, it was, it, it was the being loud. Like you would come up behind me. And that's the great part about forsaken is, is the lighting and the effects mm -hmm. and everything, the fog and the blending with the, oh, you know, everything like that. God, yes. It's so good. And like, I didn't even see you coming half the time and, and and you would come up and just get in my ear and start going. I'd be like, whoa. I'd be like, okay, this is happening. Here we go. I was like, and I, and I enjoyed it every single time. My girlfriend, like, she would laugh and all that. My girlfriend was having a ball with it. I remember she would, I think she filmed a lot of you this year on her TikTok, you know, and 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 she's just been kind of, she was like, I've seen, yeah. Yeah, she she loved just every night we went just filming it. And I was just, you know, I was like, man, she's going to catch some of the best memories that, you know, maybe that I didn't catch. So I can go back on TikTok and look at mm -hmm. it. And sure enough, she did. Like, she really um, caught a lot of great stuff about mm -hmm. uh, this year on at Haunt. So, you know, you guys, you guys killed it this year. And, and you weren't, you know, you and amongst others were just always uh, on your A game. I mean, you and I, one of the things I really liked that you guys did this year that I noticed a lot, too, was you guys really played into the shadow part of 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 you know forsaken Lake. oh yeah so that's a lot of fun you know that gives me some like batman vibes right there oh my like, god oh, you guys are playing yeah. shadows here we go like i'm sure you you probably caught this i'm pretty sure i saw you like posted up trying to watch us but there's that one crypt on the side of mission you know? right like right across from that little cutout on the left side if you're walking towards fiesta 
where there's a spotlight right overhead, but there's a perfect shadow like over the crypt. At one point, we had eight of us on there, but me and a few other monsters would just post up on there like this and press like as tight as we can against there. And it was like the perfect blind spot because people would not see us until they were like right up on this. We've had so many groups walk by and like the person will be like an inch from my face being like, is there a person there? And we just kind of like, oh, they're going to die. <laughs> That's the, those are the best. I've seen so many of those and I, and I mm-hmm. love those. I just love sitting there and watching that because like I'm well aware of what's going on and I try to put myself at a distance where I'm like, all right, I think I'm good enough where I'm not going to give them away, but I can see everything that I need to see. And it's mm-hmm. just, it's funny every single I time. I love when guests see us and they would just like not give us away to their friends. We'd see them do the little like, and just look around like, I don't see them. I don't see them. Yeah, uh, those are the best. And I, and I try to do the same thing, especially when I'm around people. I'll be like, okay, there's someone right there. I'll talk, I'll like talk to myself in my head. I'm like, there's someone mm-hmm. to my left and there's very scared people behind me. Uh, I'm going to step out of the way and let this guy mm-hmm. or this person do their job and, and drop this group because this is hilarious to me. And we appreciate it. Yeah, the, uh, I, I call it the schizo babbling when I like, Go up to people and start like <laughs> and doing my little shtick. I was so scared to do that in the beginning of the season really? because I knew I wanted that to be like an essential part of my character of her just like being insane and constantly like talking to herself and like switching between voices because the personality's taken over. Right. But I was scared of like if it would even be received well, like if it would even creep people out or if people just kind of be like, what the fuck is this loser? But it wasn't until, uh, actually, no, it was preview night where a friend of mine came through and recorded, like, going through. Because she, I was talking to them about, like, the whole creation of this character since day one. So she kind of wanted to, like, see how it, like, finally came to life. Right. And so there's a video of her just walking through. And I swear, it is, like, the most, like, cinematically filmed thing for an iPhone video. (laughs) <laughs> like she's walking down Mission Row, the camera pans up and it's right by a speaker so that like horror movie soundtrack is going on. Yeah. And all you see is me appear out of nowhere and I just like get up to her face like out of camera. You just see my hair like up in the camera and you hear me just babbling on and on until I'm yelling. And the entire time the horror like soundtrack's getting like louder and louder and louder up until I finally just be like I'll see you later. And I whip away and then it, the music calms down and you hear her just Man. getting all nervous like, oh, like that. But and even watching that freaked me out. I was like, I don't I don't like myself out there. That is <laughs> terrifying. The timing. I mean, you just, the way you described it, I'm like, I'm just mm-hmm. like, how could that have not been a more perfect time for your friend to come through and, and film exactly. that and have that whole interaction with everything? Like, that is just like, mm-hmm. that was, that was meant to be, is what it was. That's why I was thinking about, because the camera was pointing at the floor the whole time because she was so nervous. And I was like, it's from her face the whole time. So I was thinking about, oh, right. What is her actual point of view like? What is she experiencing? She is probably living with that. And then later on that day, no, no later on that week, she texted me saying she had an actual nightmare about me because of that. Wow, dude. I, I, so that, we're giving people nightmares in the lake. I mean, you're doing something right. If someone comes back to you and says, I literally had a nightmare of your character last night. And I, I, I would take mm, that as the like, next probably- morning. It was, I don't like you. I had a nightmare about you last night. <laughs> I, I would just take that overall as just like a freaking a, a sign of like, like accomplishment right there. Yeah, that that is like you did you made it as a mm-hmm. monster if someone's dreaming about you now. Like you you just you just sat Freddy Krueger. Like, I guess I'm moving up the same trying. But yep, it, it's just it's done. Kruger is benched. You know, we're putting you in in the mm-hmm. fourth quarter to finish the game off strong. And uh let me in, coach. Let me in. There it is. MVP right there. That, that's just that's it. Um, man, I, I, I really, uh, I, I, I did have a, a phenomenal time this year at, at the lake, man. I mean, it, it was, it was something where we were catching ourselves, hanging out there more and more and wanting to go back more and more. And, mm-hmm. it, you oh, know, and we it, noticed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I came back a ton. I was like, yeah, I mean, we're going to do this. And, and you know what? It, it was, it was, it was difficult this year. It really was because, you know, you if, if I could if I could clone myself and put myself in each zone for the night and just stay there and just capture everything mm. that I could, I definitely would. 
Right. You know, it's, it's, it's so difficult because there's so much talent just everywhere in the park. And you feel like if you miss one thing, you miss everything. And it's like, you know, I, but it was just that fun thing of just like, all right, let's go here. Let's see what's going to pop off now. And like, you would go, you, we would show up to a zone and something was popping off. And I was like, this is a, this is definitely a great year to be at knots. Like if anything, this mm-hmm. is it right here. So yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed it so My much. My day off was restful trying to do everything because only eight hours in the event right and so i got there my day off like all right i need to strategize and plan everything out and so i i eventually did it but i planned out this whole thing was spending at least an hour and a half in each zone yeah watching the gauntlet slider show watching at least one procession sticking for the last half of the hanging because i've already seen the I see the front part all the time walking through the lake. Right. So I just want to see the climax <laughs> and then hitting every single phase. And then I ended up doing that was it, three times that night. Wow. So I'm like, I felt like I got a good feel of the park, but even then I missed out on so much. And there's yeah. so many like other talent and people I didn't see where I'm like, oh, no. give us at least three days off so I can really like enjoy Soak the event in. as yeah, a guest and not like backstage just being like, Oh, hi, witch. Yeah. <laughs> no, then that, that, that's the thing is like, you know, you talk about time with that place and, and we did the season pass this year and, you know, it, it was something mm. that where, you know, we were dedicating, like we had done all the mazes, we've seen all the zones. Now we were just dedicating weekends to just like, okay, today we're going to go see this show. And then today we're going to go see this show, you know, like mm. we were just trying to see everything and, and do everything possible that there was at the 50th. And I feel like we accomplished just about everything we needed to, you know, like there wasn't anything that we missed. I mean, like we didn't do the log ride or like the the mine ride, but if you've done it once, you've seen mm. it a million times, you know, and, and it's it's awesome. Yeah. I love the way they decorate it, but I was like, I don't feel like getting wet, number one. Number two. It's I'm rides big, are different than shows. <laughs> Yeah. 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 And I was like, number two, I was like, I, I am very tall for the mine ride and I fit very uncomfortably. So I'm, I'm good. I've seen it. I, you know, it's, you know, I feel that I don't want to sit there with scrunched knees for like 45 minutes. Yeah. I was like, if you guys changed it and brought back actors being in here, then we have a whole different conversation about that. <laughs> oh my God. All season. Cause it's scary farm leading up to the season. They were posting like photos throughout the years. All season, I just kept talking about like I really wish they'd bring actors back on the mine ride. Like, because they posted that photo of the two that were like in the water, yeah. like fish people. I'm like, so cool. Yeah. Even for the lake, I was like, they should put like catfish or alligator people like in the water under silver bullet, yeah. and they're allowed to just come up to the railing. That'd be so dope. Like, just to kind of have that immersion of just the the more immersion of the lake. Mm-hmm. You know, that's so cool um mm-hmm. but it's like i get it it's freezing mm-hmm. at night so i can't imagine being in the water oh, yeah. for eight plus hours oh yeah and especially with the words been i mean luckily haunts not in freaking february of of every year because we'd be mm-hmm. downpouring right now and we'd just be kind of all sitting home like okay this sucks <laughs> you know but um Dude, I I want to I want to take it back a little bit. I mean, I I I love talking haunt with you. Mm. I love to get to know who who you were as as what got you into this. So, what was the 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 thing that got you into the haunt or horror scene? Um, you know, coming up. So I kind of grew up with like horror always kind of being a thing in my life. My family was very like on the goth alternative side. So I grew up with like reruns of Night Run, Elm Street, and Friday the 13th on TV. So I was very aware of like horror and it didn't really freak me out or more like the 80s slashers and like kind of cheesy horror didn't freak me out. Anything that had to do with like demonic possession, like the exorcist and like the grudge and all that terrified me. And I was so jumping to that where even the commercials would come on. I'm like, ah, no, yep. like turn the volume down or try to switch the channel. And then not very far has always been like a huge thing in my life, even though I live all the way in like the North LA County. So not even oh, wow. in OC. Right. But Knott's and Snoopy and the whole peanuts has always been like a big thing. So we'd always make frequent trips down to the farm. Mostly you do spooky farm during the day for me. Sometimes my sister would just beg and plead to go to scary farm. And my grandmother would just kind of be like, all right, if I'm taking one of you, I'm taking all of you. So I got introduced to Scary Farm real early on, and I 
did not like it. Like, I think my first year was 07 and I was eight years old. And I, my first maze was the grudge maze because my sister loved the grudge. I hated it. And she dragged all of us through there. And I had a full on panic attack. What was it? It was like the very last room where the stilt walker, like Kayako comes out with an extremely right. long jaw. I was just hysterical. They're like, all right, we need to go right now. <laughs> Just get the hell out yeah, of here, I went, man. I, I had a seven. similar experience in 08, trust me. Mm-hmm. I didn't go 08 because I think they're like, yeah, we're not doing that again. <laughs> I went 09 because I was like, no, no, I'm a big kid. I can handle it. Same shit got through one maze. We had to leave because I was scared. Actually, no, I made it through the maze. I forget which maze it was, but we were walking through Camp Snoopy. Because my grandmother thought it's Camp Snoopy, it's going to be the kids section, not realizing it's the fucking gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, and dude, so we're walking that's through, that's and, awesome. and Josh, and every scary farm monster knows who Josh is. But Josh, you know, big bearded dude, used yeah. to be a jester of the gauntlet. This motherfucker, I love Josh. With this dude, wasn't even aiming at me or my family at all. He was just walking in front and he walked up and he like kicked his foot at like some other group and just went it made a spark. Sent me. I was hysterical. We had to leave right then and there. Do you get into the gauntlet and already just turning away to go? Oh yeah, it was like in. No, we went in, did a maze, passing through. All right, we're leaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, the, oh man, that was yeah, that was exactly that, me was like, for I was like, I hate this. And it wasn't until 2013 or 2014. It was whenever uh, the Exorcist and Liar on that were both at Horror Nights. Okay, yeah, 2016. Because we I kept getting asked about yeah. TV. And I was like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, was when Exorcist and Liar on were both there. And uh, I could be getting the years confused. But I know Liar on was there because it scared the fuck out of me. And I was like, I won't do Exorcist. Hell no. But we went through, and that's when I kind of like caught the bug of like, oh, I'm not scared, but I love this shit now. <laughs> and so, because Horror Nights was the one closest to me, and Little Kid Brain, because they had the better commercials, I automatically thought, oh, this would better haunt. Oh, dude. I was just like, I want to be a scare actor in Horror Nights. Like, oh, I can't wait till I turn 18, blah, 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 become a scare actor. It wasn't until 2019. Yeah, I was 20 years old. I applied to work at Horror Nights. I got put in Scarepool. No, I got casted in Universal Monsters, but then, like, right before we actually started, they put me in Scarepool, which I was like, okay, cool. I get to be everything, like, a different night, I guess. But I don't really want to go into details there because I still work at Universal for Day Ops, but. Gotcha. It just wasn't a good experience and, like, the new management, like, had in that year was I really didn't like how they were running things. I really didn't feel respected for lack of better terms. Gotcha. And so apparently there's a walkout going on that year. And I was like, you know what? Bye. <laughs> You're like, I kind of got turned off of scare acting for a hot minute. I would still go to uh-huh. Horror Nights and Scary Farm. But after that, I was like, I don't know if I want to like scare act. It seems to be very like you're on a tight leash. And it wasn't until uh, Jasper Redvine from Carnegie. I was talking, I'm, you know, I met them in 2020. We were talking about Scare Acting and they were talking about their time at Queen. And they were saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to hop over to Not Soon. Yada, yada, yada. And then I just thought, you know, might as well. Coming to find out my landlord, he was like, yeah, I'll do Haunt with you. I didn't know until like we applied. He was the fucking face of Black Magic. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, fucking sure, Mr. Face of a man. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do hot then. And then, yeah, 2022 is my first year, and I got casted as a nether in Mesmer. So basically, a kind of like a blackout, like camouflage scare, but we get to walk around the maze. <laughs> right. A little bit of flair. Man, um, you know, yeah, you- I fell in love right off the bat of 
you're talking a lot of great years here, uh, you know, of, of haunt history and just of, of, of overall, mm-hmm. like, the, you know, just you're taking me right now through a time machine of just where I was in time as far as all those events go. Because, yeah, I, I was on the same mindset. I was like, Horror Nights is, is the, this is it. This is the haunt. Mm-hmm. Like, and then when I finally got back to knots, I'm like, hold on. Uh, let me hit the You're brakes. Like, on that. Oh, yes. L- let me hit the brakes on that horn night statement real quick and redact that for a second. I might have to attend mm-hmm. knots a few more years just to kind of get the the hang of this one, but I think knots might have something yeah, here. It's like sure, horn nights has the chainsaws, but knots gets right up in your face. And yeah. I freaked me out to where I'm like, all right, I want to these guys are it. Yeah. I uh and you know, I had a lot of um East Coast friends visit this last year. And um, you know, mm-hmm. over in, in Florida, the biggest really haunt out there, there's other ones popping up now, but like the granddaddy of them all in, in Florida would be Halloween Horror Nights out there. Right. Um and you know, it, it's something that, you know, when I've when I've when we were at Knott's last year, we were all hanging out in front of Ghost Town at the hotel and um you know, I told them, I'm like, how does this feel? You guys are right now standing in the birthplace of sliding. This is where it was all invented. And you guys see that shit over there in Florida, but you guys are actually stepping foot of where it was birthed at, man. Like, this is it right here. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, there's a few historical things in California. This history. I mean, there's a lot of historical things. Don't get me wrong. Bands, everything come here. You know, you got Mm -hmm. Walt Disney stepping on, you know, Disneyland. That's the only park he's ever stepped on. Right down the road from me. Right. And then right down the road, another big milestone in history of, of the world. Mm-hmm. And that is the birthplace of sliding. So, you know, it's mm-hmm. a win-win. It's a win-win. Very much. Exactly. Like even because working at Universal during the day, they always ask me about like, oh, so the leave of absence you took, like, what did you do during that? And I'm very open of like, yeah, I go down to knots. And I work as this character down there. Number one question I'm always asked is, have you tried it down here? Or blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, I thought Horror Nights was the better one. And so I, I turned into a corporate shill real quick. And I'm like, no, Nazi is the birthplace. It started all of it. I'm like, I've only been at the farm for a few years. And I'm already super like, this is the place. <laughs> no, you're right. Absolutely. A hundred percent. It's because, you know, I, I, um, I constantly still talk to that about people about like why it is what it is. And I'm like, look at the history, dude. It's been around mm-hmm. for over 50 years now. It's like, you and... can't. It's like, I saying? love all these other haunts. Like, I just love haunt in general, but you can't beat the original. No, it's the original. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's whatever they're doing in their formula. It's worked for them all these years mm-hmm. and it continues to work for them. And I feel like every year it just gets bigger and better. And, and there's always something that they want to unveil that they're, they're waiting for the next grand project to unveil. And, and, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I think I, when you think you've seen it all, they surprise you and be like, nah, we still got more tricks up the bag. You know what I mean? So exactly. Like knots continues to like top themselves and prove that like, Oh, we're not done yet. Like last year working, this might be rose covered colored glasses because of working there. I was kind of in awe of how everything was and thinking that, there's no way they can talk this next year for the 50th because this is already like top notch. Like, right. Everything's perfect. And then this year came about and absolutely blown away. And now I'm like, how are they going to top this year? <laughs> but, you yeah. know, not magic. They probably are going to find a way and do it. Yeah, no. And, and I and I thought that same exact question when it ended last year, I'm like, how are you going to go bigger next year? And I know mm-hmm. that. I know that there's a lot of spots open in a lot of zones. A lot of people have hung it up. Um, and that kind of mm-hmm. makes me a little happy. Like, don't get me wrong. All those characters that hung it up, I'm going to deeply miss them. They were all freaking fantastic. Oh, absolutely. They did amazing things. But I'm like, I'm always excited to see what the future holds for the next generation. Oh, absolutely. Like, I wasn't there for the ghost count, like, send off of those monsters, but seeing all the videos of that got me super emotional and i'm like i never talked to half these people damn but yeah you are absolutely right i'm super excited to see like what this new generation this new blood of talent that's coming into streets is gonna bring yeah because like we already thought not streets is like top of the line insane unhinged like there's no way you could beat these guys but we got some we got some crazy people like brewing up to where i'm like 
Ooh, I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, it, it's it's great. I, I can't wait, man. And and I think it's gonna be mm-hmm. it's gonna be a fun one to see. Uh, like a lot of uh, who comes, who goes where, who moves where, you know, like mm-hmm. or who comes back to the original places. You know, we got mm-hmm. obviously two new mazes that are gonna be introduced this year. So I'm excited to see what those are gonna be. Um, you mm-hmm. know, there's a lot in store, and there's a lot of you know, there's always talks in the rumor mills as to it, are things gonna be returning next year. Like, are they gonna bring back the hang? Oh, yeah. just a one year thing you know are they gonna bring we back hear all, all show, those know? rumors it's just yeah. like we hear all those rumors and i'm like as fun as they are as much as i want to believe them most of the time i'm like i'm just gonna wait until there's an announcement yeah. nothing's real until there's an announcement man you think so it's that hard for you that's me like, from being like all right but what <laughs> if that's like that's like my job right there i have to report rumors like anything mm-hmm. like it is and it, it, the amount of people that I know in the community that actually know stuff, and I'm just like, I don't care Same. what you know. I want to keep it a surprise because I, I like to be genuinely uh, surprised and my raw reactions mm-hmm. when I first hear about it. Because I'm like, if I know about it, then it's just not going to be anything like fun. Like my reaction on camera is going to not be the same as yeah. if I just found out five minutes ago. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, when it comes to spoilers, I'm very, uh, very, uh, Mm-hmm. what's the word i'm looking for i'm very like no no spoilers <laughs> you're like you know what none for me i'm the same way all the, all the time i'll hear some shit where it's like oh did you hear this is leaving this is coming in this person's coming back right. this person's this i'm like stop but <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> no dude it, it's it's one of those things where you know especially like you know you talk about an event like hhn and that's like the that market's mm-hmm. so flooded with with rumors and and uh, you know speculation and oh all that. God, it's just yeah. like I don't know. I, I, at some it's point, so funny working at Universal and hearing all the rumors. And because right. of where I work at the park, I can easily kind of pop back and be like, "Oh yeah, no, they're they don't know shit." <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll see no, and, stuff, but I'll head backstage and take a look at everything and be like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's so funny to me cuz like, you know, there's so many like, you know, for me there was just a point, you know, and I and I still love covering HHN, I still love it, but I I think for me as far as like with with all these people like knowing things and having like these speculation mm-hmm. apps and stuff. It kind of as as like someone who's who does reviews and and kind of like covers this stuff, it kind of takes the fun out of the excitement of it, you know? Like when I used to do like early speculation videos, it was just basically things off the top of my head and things that I saw that were relevant in pop yeah. culture, you know? And it's like, Oh yeah. And that's fine. It's just when people are trying to like stick their phones in between the walls and take a photo of yeah. like gravel and be like, well, it's a new maze being built. I'm like, oh, is that it? They're making a new driveway. What are you talking about? <laughs> It'd be like that though, man. Uh, I know the guy who goes all the way up to the damn mountain to take pictures of construction oh, photos. Like, and I'm just like, y'all are crazy, bro. Like if I can't get to an area, I'm not trying any harder. It's like, obviously they don't want us to film that. And you know, it mm-hmm. is what it is, you know, it sucks, but yeah, like we just, have the signs for a reason. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not going to climb mountains to get up there to get footage. Like, you know, that's why I yeah. got you to do that. I'm like, you can do that. I'm just, yeah. no, I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like so many times I'll be taking my walk through the park to where I'm stationed at and I'll see people just like pressed up against the little like construction walls trying to see like the Fast and the Furious ride being instructed. I'm like, all you're going to see is dirt mounds. Ain't nothing there yet, homie. Nah, it, it, they, come on, bro. Like they're all their resources right now are go, going towards Epic Universe. Mm-hmm. So like when that's a little bit more finished, then you'll see some progress on the on the Fast and Furious. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. yeah you know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, it's, I, I know, I know how these things, but these construction projects work. And then they also have walls going up in Vegas for freaking Horror Unleashed. So, you know. Oh, yeah. The area, fit, was it 15? I hate to turn this podcast around from what the topic originally is, but let's just be real. You know, it seems, that's just how hard it be. It seems like Universal is just taking over the theme park game right now. And I just, I'm impressed they at are, what they're doing. They are trying to. They are really trying to like compete with disney right now and seeing Very all their sort of backstage and i can't really talk about it because you know, no it's fine but it's like like, like i said this is an interesting race to see 
Yeah, man, it's it's I I'm excited to see what that epic universe has to unveil. I mean, that dark mm-hmm. universe alone, I've wanted something for like oh that for God, years, yeah. I'm like, and I'm so stoked for that Ministry of Magic. Like, I'm going even further into the Wizarding World. Like, this is amazing. Like, I was just like, dragon. maybe all the ideas that John Birdie keeps promising that gets cut last minute, which isn't his fault. To, that's how budgets are. But yeah, you know, maybe with Dark Universe, all those can actually come to life. Yeah, I'm so stoked. And then, you know, to get my haunt fix over at Horror Unleashed in Vegas, a place I already love to go, Las Vegas, oh. Nevada, and, and to, to add mm. a year round Horror Nights out there is just so I can't wait for to see what they do with that. I, you know, it's gonna be awesome. I'm praying for that one. Like, I really, really want that one to succeed because I've known they have or they've had like, not so great luck in Vegas with year round haunts, like with Eli Roth's Oratorium. So I'm like, I hate for it to be like that. So I'm just like, please work out. You know, like what? if I can move to Vegas and scare you around, I'm in. Yeah, you know what? And I will say this. Um, I, I think from when that happened to what Vegas is today, um, Vegas is is little by little climbing its mountaintop to become the oh, entertainment yeah. capital of the world. Um Oh, absolutely. You know, you, you have things like, you know, that you got a, you got a 10 year deal with the, the, uh, the Grand Prix coming every single year that mm-hmm. brought them in so much money. They got the Super Bowl this yeah, year, you know, that's bringing them in. Built. Yeah. They got, they got, you know, the athletics moving over with a brand new stadium. Like they are really maximizing that. And I feel like, you know, the last couple of times I've gone there, which was all last year, you know, and, and I, you could see an increase in the horror market out there. Um, There are things popping up that are just so well put together. I mean, we've done, uh, you know, mm-hmm. we've done the it escape room we've done the saw escape room you know and those are just mm-hmm. so well put together um and, and to see like themed restaurants themed like you know stores mm-hmm. um it, the horse scene is really starting to pop like up there just, oh yeah it just in general i feel like there's this huge uprising in horror and i i'm all for it because i spent oh, yeah. years kind of being like that weird kid that people be like oh you like horror movies you like serial killers like jason and now everyone's like Oh yeah, no, Jason's cool. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Have you sat through all of his movies, including oh. Goes to Manhattan? Because it's not that cool in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Same thing with Halloween. Now people are like, oh, Michael Myers is great. I'm like, uh, uh, uh I'm like, go watch sure four through six and then we'll have a conversation. <laughs> no, I can go on about Halloween four and why they chose that at horror nights, but that's that'll be a four hour convo. I, I, I have I have I have some reasoning to believe that i i had something to do with fucking that up <laughs> I, I really do i i hope i'm not the reason but like i have that guilt oh, in my we can mind. talk about that off the record because i know i have that guilty conscious and i just i if, that, if i'm the reason for that i i hate myself for that so oh, man, they didn't cover up the damn sign it's noticeable to the public come on now yeah that's all i'm gonna say yeah they that's their fault. Yeah. So anyway, um, but I, I will say that you're going to see a shift in, in, in the haunt industry within the next, you know, two oh, to three years, um, which, you know, brings me all the way back to knots. You know, you're seeing Horror Nights take the initiative and kind of build this whole year round haunt, you know, idea out in Vegas. Obviously, there's a lot of things popping in Vegas. There's a lot of land opened out mm-hmm. in Vegas. So there is room for things like that out there. Um, you ever think that with an event and a popularity of not scary farm that knots would probably or cedar fair whatever maybe jump on that initiative as well and kind of make something year round as well i feel like things might be cooking though because there's that merger that just happened with six flags and six right. flags has been doing screen break here so it's like maybe they are dipping their toes into like the year out of horror movie. Again, I don't know. I don't work for either company right now, only for like a month and a half right. <laughs> during Halloween. But I I, I honestly feel like just as like a guest perspective that there is something brewing. And I feel like within these next five years or so, we're going to see like a huge boom and like the whole like font scene. Man, what a what a time to be alive, man. We got some of the great, greatest hey. movies out there. You know, it's like it's just you know we got you and you're not even in your you're not even in your full prime yet bro you're just you're still getting in my second year yeah um 
And I know we drove a little off track, but I I, I could tell how enthusiast uh, enthusiastic you are about Haunt with me. So it's it's always great to have a nice uh, healthy conversation about that, man. I, you know, Absolutely. feel like the it's the like world is drifting away from healthy conversations lately. So we're we're trying to bring that back. You know, we're gonna have some healthy ones. Uh, on yeah. Uh, so your first year actually finally getting the scare. Mm-hmm. Now we're now we're finally diving into this. Mm-hmm. Your first year getting the scare. Um, what year was that? What did you do? What was your mindset going into it? How did that audition go for you? Like all that fun stuff. Let's see, so my first year at the farm, uh, my audition, we signed up very like on a whim. It was my landlord. He got the, he got the flyer on Facebook. I'm like, Oh, scary farm auditions are open. And he sent the thing in our house chat. I'm like, Hey, who wants to do haunt with me? We can carpool. And I'm like, you know what? This is different from Horror Nights. Like, let's do it. And then he dropped the whole I was the face of black magic. I'm like, okay. He <laughs> led <to> see. <laughs> Which he went on to do two more iconic characters in his run. I think he's done hot now from what he's told me. I'm not going to speak for him, but it's not what else it be. But he's right. pretty much done at this point. Last year, he played uh, Master and Dark Ride. And this year he was um, basically a ringmaster again in Chambers. If uh, you're paying attention to Nazi's Instagram, when they're doing the kind of Halloween, he was the clown that was on the face of number one with the big beard. That's awesome. That is awesome. So yeah, uh, kind of off topic. Yeah, my first aud- my audition, it was kind of weird. I didn't, I hear a lot of people complain about it. They kind of like how they did it. It was like the whole stand in the line. They got a look of us. They walk down the line to like hear our voices and had to say like in whatever voice. Had us do a character in place and then whole walk down kind of like the standard haunt audition. But I remember just kind of watching people and thinking like, hmm, what kind of monster is this going to be? Kane, Ragdoll from Part Evil is actually in my audition group. And I remember seeing him just like tear it up on the walk down and thinking, this dude's fucking good. If he doesn't like hit streets or something, like I'm gonna find out he was anyways. <laughs> yeah, I got put in Mesmer only like two weeks later and tell me that, oh yeah, you're gonna be playing the nether in Mesmer. No idea what that was. So <laughs> I just went on YouTube watching so walk through trying to pinpoint because they gave me a brief character description of like he's the keeper of the realms and all that he hates intruders travels between life and death so i'm like what the fuck does that look like so i just kept skimming through videos and i kept seeing this one character like all throughout the maze it was just kind of like a slipknot looking mask kind of looks like mick thompson's from slipknot right uh black robe with like red gauntlets on it's like i think that's it when wardrobe came about i was like oh that's it. I got it. Easy, easy, <laughs> easy. But yeah, I knew my character description was vague and they kind of didn't really tell us like what to do with the character aside from your energy levels of two. You don't speak, but you can make noises if you want. Uh, you don't like people being in here. Just get them out. So all right, cool. I'm just going to be super aggressive and like running at people and loud. Complete opposite of that. But they apparently they I was doing some right because they didn't tell me anything. They were just, yeah, no, keep up. You're good. Man, I mean, again, you, you know, you, you talk about a powerhouse maze like Mesmer. I mean, Mesmer is one of my favorites of all time. I mean, when that debuted in 2021, I was blown away by that. I was like, this is like taking acid without having to take oh, acid. Yeah, same. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it, it's just such oh, yeah. a, a walk put together the maze. Walk is all like, this is. Yeah. Um, I think what really threw us off that year is we didn't have the pre-show like the previous right. year. And so the front room was just kind of like in shambles as you see when you walk through. And they didn't really give the Professor Mesmer or anything else correction to do that room, which I get. Trust your actors, let them do their thing. I'm all for right. that. But it very wasn't just bonus insurance of like, 
here's a room. <laughs> and so yeah. I was going to cast a messenger. So we were the first ones to go be on stage, first one to leave. We kind of just, it really was just figuring out as we went and just going off of, you know, like we did talk every here and there on breaks, but rarely was it about like scares or how to do stuff in the maze. It was like, what do you do after work? Like, what do you do as a day job? It was a very just off feel. And it was kind of organic of like how we went from the beginning of the season, kind of like these quiet, timid monsters, just kind of popping out, still figuring out our bearings to very end of the season, just this ball of chaos where in your face every two seconds. Yeah. Uh, and I love that with with mazes, especially because like that, again, mm-hmm. brings me more immersed into what I'm being told and and to really be driven into that story, you know, to feel part mm-hmm. of it. And then that's that's I, I love it when when people get close like that. I mean, it's just like, oh, OK, you're trying to tell me something. You're trying to really tell me something and you mm-hmm. want to make sure that I don't forget it. And I was like, and you are doing a phenomenal job. Keep going. Mm. Oh, yeah, we definitely like played with the story a lot in our maze, but just purely off of feel. Because uh, my character, we, there were six of us, six or eight of us. There was a lot of us walking around that looked the same. But uh, we were kind of the only ones allowed to actually run the maze, to just go room to room. Right. And so found the mirror room, which okay. is kind of infamous now. Yeah. But I found the mirror room and was like, I like this. There's not really anything going on in here. Like we have Vanya, but she's behind the like flash trick mirror. This room okay. itself is pretty empty. I feel like there could be more of us in here, like doing stuff. And so we kind of developed the scare technique. It's what was now called the trauma center. It would be this whole thing of, uh, if you remember how the room was laid out of like that, long mirror hallway and then the right. sharp immediate left turn to like the curve that goes out right we planned it all just off trial and error until we got the timing down from like night i believe it would be you walk down the hallway at the very end vanya would hit the trick mirror but as you get down to that end of the hall i'm right there like in between the wall and this giant spitty pillar just post it up like this just eyeing you down and then as you're going around, there'd be another one of me, pop out curtain, like as you're already in this condensed hallway. And That's then awesome. another one at the corner of the room, I knew down. And as they're coming out, I would grab that giant spinny pillar, which I've heard they're not allowed to do anymore. Sorry about that, new nethers. <laughs> but I would grab the giant spinny pillar and just swing around with it and slide right into people's peripherals and we would just corner them in this tiny little hallway and we got the timing down to where if we just like kept it consecutive it would be about five to six like scares in the span of 10 seconds just bam 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 the first night we did that we had what was it five people had to be escorted out of like our room through the blackout curtains And our (laughs) HC came in and said, they said, quote, you guys are mean. Like, whatever you guys are doing in here, you're actually traumatizing people. You are mean. Keep it up. (laughs) Oh, yes. If if they're following that statement with keep it up, (laughs) you are doing your job to the best of your ability with every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears. I was like, we are. All right. This is it. We got it. (laughs) This is our bam, oh, man. clockwork Who, now. Whoever that person was deserves a pay raise for saying that to you. It, it, it just in general, like oh, to, to let you do you. I love Chloe. Shout yeah. out Chloe. I think yeah. yeah, she's still at the farm. I think she's doing a tech this year or this past year. Man, I mean, kudos to her because I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, yeah, whatever you're doing is traumatizing people and you guys are mean. Keep doing it. (laughs) Yeah, we got that like technique down like so well to where because obviously people would have like days off or people would have to call in sick. We still made it work to where it was just me in there. Where like if Vanya was out, the other mothers had to be in like another room because there's not many monsters in there. And I was still able to work that room and like 
play around with the mirrors to look like I'm staring people down like three rooms away or something. And I feel like it was one Chloe came in and said, you make it feel like there's five of you in here and I know it's just you. I- I'm not coming in here anymore. And she started to like use her flashlight every time she went in the room. I was like, all right, all right. I feel like I should tone it down. Man, you, 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 uh, the way I always like to put it is you let the inmates run the asylum, it's gonna be chaos. And that's the fun part about it. It kind of was like that, yeah, but we made it work. Yeah, no, and I, and I love, uh, you know, then, and, you know, this kind of ties back to like, um, I remember when we were asking people to be on the show, they asked about, you know, maze monsters. And I'm like, of course, like a monster's a monster. You guys got stories to tell. And it's stories like that where, yeah. you know, you're not given much, but you maximize what you are given and then you add to it to make mm-hmm. it your own thing and to make it a fun time, and a memorable time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you guys did that. No problem. I mean, a lot of people it, don't realize too that like a lot of street monsters come from mazes too. Yeah, that's where it all starts, man. And it's like they need to know that you can mm-hmm. interact with a guest, you know, on a personal, close level before they can let you interact with guests exactly. on like a more open environment, you know. So it's it's really exactly. like, it's it's really cool, man, to see everyone work rooms like that and really make mm-hmm. the you know you may have sell something in the mazes the one year, but then the next year you're seeing something completely brand new. And I'm like, I love it. It, it almost feels like a brand new experience again. Oh yeah, like uh, shout out to uh, Tay in Cardibal Tiptoe, the ballerina clown. <laughs> Me and her, we both started out in Mesma last year and. If anything, she was in the room right next to mine, or not the room before mine, but literally if you look at her and I could shoot kind of in her room. So a lot of the time, me and her would just get tag team on scares, where like I would go in, kind of mess with her in her room, and we'd like target someone. And then five minutes later, they come through my room. I'm like, I remember you. <laughs> Dude, that's the best. Like, yeah, a lot of, oh man, a lot of me. Monsters started out in our mazes. That's why I always tell people, like, mazes are just as important as streets because that's where most of us started out at. Like, well, yeah, yeah. People don't come. Of course. I mean, yeah, streets has its fans, but majority of people don't come to haunt for streets. They come to haunt because they hear the tents of the scariest fucking mazes you've heard of. Right. No, it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, I, I always tell people this too. I'm like, you know, like a lot of people like, you know, it, it, being on streets is, is awesome, you know, and it's, it's cool. It, you know, you have that freedom to kind of create and, and, and scare mm-hmm. differently than you would inside of a maze. And, um, I always say though, like, you know, about 90% of the people that show up to these things are there to go through the mazes and, you know, exactly. like, the street zones are obviously just kind of zones to kind of keep the vibe and the and the and the storytelling mm-hmm. and, and the scare the yeah. you know, the, the scares going. We're you know? there and, to keep you like enticed in this like world that we created. What do you? We're right. to keep you like immersed while you're going from point A to point B. Right. And, 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 you know, that's why I think it's always a team effort because, you know, you can, Mm -hmm. you got you go into that maze and you get scared really well. And then, you know, you're going to come out of that maze and go to a zone and you're going to, you're going to want to keep that adrenaline and that energy going as Mm -hmm. far as, oh, this person was super scared coming out of this maze. I need to make sure that I can keep that going until she gets out of the zone. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I I love seeing that. Oh, yeah. And that was the thing we tried for with Forsaken. Because we knew we had chambers like down at the very end of Forsaken near the front entrance of the park. And then we had a carnival near the other end, Ghost Town at one exit, and Silver Bullet right in our zone. So we kind of made it a thing to like anyone we saw coming in, try and get them because we know they're probably still shook it up from wherever they came. They're still feel still feeling the earth or the nerves. We're going to keep that your entire walk through. This is the little like safe spot. Like mm-mm, just because it's quiet doesn't mean you're safe. Man. Yeah. And so, you know, to me, it's like to hear the, the stories of you and Mesmer, man. It already sounded like the uh, once you lit the fuse, man, the firecracker went off. And, and, and once you got, oh, you know, 
Yeah, once you got once you got comfortable and once you got, you know, a little bit more familiar with the with the space and stuff, you you mm-hmm. really utilized it and made it your own and, and an unforgettable experience for for some who walk through there. Um mm-hmm. you know, going into, you know, that year for the fiftieth now for for taking that energy and, and maximizing it even more, like what was that mm-hmm. for you like going into like uh the auditions for this to try to, you know, get on a street zone, but hey, you know, it's the fiftieth. I just want to be here at this point. So for this year, I want to say the the second to last week of before uh, twenty twenty two, I really seem to take interest in the lake. So I've always been like a huge fan of the lake, but now I really got to be up close and like see the costumes and actual bright lights backstage, and like actually see the people who are in there and kind of get to know them a bit. And so that's when I really did my research in on the lake. And I started talking to some of the monsters and being like, hey, can you tell me about like the zone? What kind of characters there are? Blah, blah, blah. And so from season ending until, yeah, auditions, I spent just every day creating and tweaking and working out this character that I created for the lake. And it wasn't until March or April, I sent not an email, kind of just compiled the whole story of this character with like confidence and all that they're like hey this is like what i kind of want to bring to the table for the 50th um don't know like if you guys are gonna accept that i'm just gonna leave this here a little little tweak on the doormat all i heard was yeah we'll look at it didn't hear anything back and so going into i had the mindset like I don't know if I'm even going to be accepted or like if that character is even going to be accepted. I'm just happy I'm here. Right. You know what? I'm still going to like go. Like I'm still going to audition for streets, but, or I'm still going to go for like the new audition. I'm not going to do a rehire, but even if I don't get it, I'm still happy to be. It's, it's literally haunt history. It's the 50th. Right. And so the audition, it was so nerve wracking because sitting outside, I'm hearing how everyone else is auditioning. It seems kind of like the standard of like the whole lineup, walk down thing. Mine was not like, mine was very shotgun. It was, we went in 20 seconds to your character, done. And then the rest of the time, it was me and I want to say like 12 or 15 other people just standing in a line as they're slowly calling up like one at a time. I was the second to last person they called up. So the entire time, they were spending like 10 minutes just murmuring amongst themselves, calling up different monsters. I'm sweating bullets, just sitting there. And of course, I'm right in front of them, like first in the line. So I'm sitting there just... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until I saw one of them kind of like look at me and then whisper to another person some shit and then go, oh. And then they reached out and pulled out a little black notepad as they're looking through that and then looking at me. I really started to shit myself. I'm like, it's in my fucking notepad. Oh, uh, what's <laughs> going on? And then they called me up, and Josh's words were, You pitched it, you're gonna do it. Welcome to Forsaken Lake. And I I tried so hard to like contain myself, but I was still just like tearing up and welling up at the table. And they're giving a whole rundown of like, yeah, like you want to see the character that you want to do. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sitting there just man so yeah i got told red auditions just go they didn't give me any input on it it was just very like that's what you're doing go for it dude I mean, you know, you think of especially like, you know, you talk about, you know, pitching it beforehand and just kind of, you know, you know, just seeing what would happen, you know, and, and then not hearing back. And then all of a sudden kind of getting surprised at the, uh, at the audition. It's like, Oh, well you pitched yeah. this character. Let's see what you can do with huge this character. Surprise. Yeah. Huge surprise at that, yeah. you know? And, and, and it's like, oh, yeah. you know, to, to kind of give it, be given that opportunity to prove yourself and then to go out there that season and mm-hmm. beyond prove yourself. Like, oh, I yeah. think you, you did it beyond, you know, what they were expecting. And, and, and to kind of see that progression from day one to the final night, you know, it's just so much has been put in within one season that, you know, it's just, 
you kind of look at it and go like, man, I can't wait to see what happens next. Like there, there's so much that there, there probably could still be told. Right. There's so much that could be done. Like, and I feel like he just got started and, and now you're, you're at a place now where it's just like, wow. Like I, I guarantee you, I'm not the only one that remembers you from Forsaken. Like there's probably a lot of people out there that probably still talk about you to this day of either screaming at them or, or whatever it was you did to them. But there is someone out there, I guarantee you, that tells stories about, you know, you and the lake like all the damn time because the lake was just a very special place this haunt season as far as where it was. And, you know, earlier in the episode, we talked about the target on my back and you made sure that that was, mm-hmm. that was executed and, 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 and done well. Mm-hmm. And now that makes me just want to put a target on my back every single year to see what I can see from, you know, stepping up like it all, you know, that for me was just like hearing that I was like, holy shit, like, was I really responsible for him wanting to make sure that they were the zone this year? And you amongst a lot of people proved me wrong this past year. And I'm, I'm very happy to say that. I am so thankful to hear like, yeah, again, going into the season, I was just so nervous of even playing this character and the execution of it. And so to like hear from people like that, hey, you scared the fuck out of me. When I talked with someone who came from, like, oh, yeah, it was this character. And they gave, oh, that was you kind of reaction. It's always like, thankful because this character that I wrote is like drastically different from how the lake usually is. Because right. I love for kid. I'm not, I'm not sure talking them in any I worship the zone. But uh it kind of Asian, like previous years of being like the slow, creepy, just kind of toned down, not as like the zone. Right. And this character I wrote is like the complete opposite. So a quick little rundown is her name's Clarissa Van Hoyt. She's middle child in a family of florists. She went crazy after her parents passed away. And started getting into the cult, kind of ties into the whole, uh, you know, spooky witch stuff that's going on. Yeah. No, yeah, I I think that with you know the storyline that it's being taken to right now, especially. Did I lose him? I think I lost him. Did I lose you? I think I lost him. Hello. There we go. We're back. Hello. There we go. We're back. We're back. Um, no, what I was saying was I, I think with, you know, with with everything the way it is right now, as far as like everything with knots, as far as this this overall tied in story mm. of the witch being involved with all this stuff. Like I think that mm. you know, it I, was really yeah, like, definitely I, I love that so story. much. Yeah, it's such a good story and it really hear more secrets about like how this zone or this maze ties into that it's just so cool like i was worried about how people like if people would even kind of catch on to the story that i was trying to tell because the whole thing about her is that she killed her sisters because she read this book and made for an eye soul for a soul killed the living raised the dead so she thought if i kill my sisters i can bring my parents back that's not how that works (laughs) so now once the lake rose back over as like punishment for killing her sisters the souls of her two sisters now possess her body so it's kind of like a three in one there's three drastically different personalities going on and so i was really worried about like if that's even going to come off the way i'm portraying it like if people are going to get that but no i had people straight up be like no yeah the little kid personality colleen like her donna the aggressive one mm -mm, stay away from me (laughs) Oh man, I think that right there needs to be a T-shirt of like all the personalities right there, just sort of mm-hmm. like kind of like a a mood throughout the week kind of T-shirt, if you if you will. I think that'd be. Great. Uh, I kind of I kind of did that where like backstage I'd be like, you know, it feels like a Donna weekend. I'm just gonna be super high energy and aggressive. Or I'm like, is. I'm feeling kind of cold like this last hour i'm just gonna be a little kid <laughs> what what was some of your main like inspiration behind uh coming up with the character i know there's there's so many out there in great movies um there's people that have who've played characters like this mm-hmm. what were some of the big inspirations for you kind of coming up with the the idea of this character so some of my just in general my big inspirations were haunt 
have been um is it Merrick and Lucio, Ghost Town, or now in Carnival. I grew up like watching videos of them online and kind of like a lot of other people watching like Dracula. Right. But then I started to see like more videos pop up on forums and like Facebook and Instagram of like Lucio and Merrick just tearing it up. And then the Sliders of Ghost Town documentary came out. And so these are like two icons that I've always looked up to. Where I'm like, these, they know what they're fucking doing. And so, oh, guys. like you said, I kind of, I channeled a lot of like, Merrick into like Madonna performance and just being really aggressive and like running up and accusing people like you're the one I'm here <laughs> and just like you know not leaving them alone even making the big guys kind of be like we freeze yeah and uh I really liked how Lucio was doing um patches his clown this last year I think that's the name I'm sorry if I butchered that but uh his clown with the eight personalities I, I, I really call, liked I how call, he was doing that. I call Lucio's clown um, gimmick the Carnival Hostel, and and he's I've told him that to his face many times. So. Carnival Hostel. <laughs> I all last year I was calling him Hostel backstage just because that's what it said in his hot jersey. So like, hi Hostel. Yep. Yep. Uh, I like the idea of having to play like so many drastically different characters, and so I thought I want to challenge myself. Like I know I can play just one character and stick to that. I want to see how I can do three that are just complete opposites of each other, but still like for people to be able to tell that like these are completely different people and can just look at me and be like, oh, that's that, that's that personality. That's this one. Right. Yeah. I, and, just, I, and I think that that's visually, something... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say visually stuff like Evil Dead, The Grudge, The Ring, stuff that freaked me out as a kid, I tried to take into this. So that's why I had the long, stringy black hair, and I spent a lot of the time just kind of face down like this. Just because that yeah. visual of like the eye peeking through the hair is like, oh, I don't like that. You know, and if I remember correctly, too, like a lot of, I know a lot of photographers that took photos of you, like that was kind of one of the, the main looks is like you kind of just looking aggressive in that look. And mm -hmm. I think that was one of the things that were like, even looking at it, mm -hmm. Looking back at photos, I'm just like, oh shit, that is pretty terrifying when you look at that in the right lighting and the fog and everything like that. Right. That coming at you is terrifying. Like seeing some of those photos and even seeing videos of myself, I'd be like, I don't like that. I'm like, <laughs> that's what people were seeing. I understand why they were running. You're like, that makes so Maggie. much sense now. <laughs> yeah, man. That that, but it's just mm -hmm. it's. I, I love seeing it, dude. I mean, it, and it, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't just you. You guys had so much great talent on, on the lake this year that, you know, it, you know, it, it really brought the best out in everyone, especially, you know, I think it, with it being the 50th too, everyone wanted to give it their all and, you know, and, and give the fans something to remember. And I think that's why we are doing what we're doing this month. It's 2024 and we're still talking about the 50th. Like that shows you how much of an impact mm -hmm. it's had oh, on all absolutely. of us. You know, so it, it's it's so cool to see. I think like there's I said, a day that's gone by where we haven't talked about the fiftieth and like all of the chats. Right, and I'm still seeing like no matter what holiday it is, like you'd be like, but you remember the fiftieth though? You know, it was like, uh, but you know, it's one of those things where you know we went back to it earlier. It's saying like I'm excited to see what the future of this haunt looks like. You know, there's there's a lot of new mm -hmm. people going to be coming in that are very hungry to do this. That are that were just like you know mm -hmm. diehard fans sitting not watching their favorites and stuff, and now it's their turn to see what they can prove. Um, one kid that I that I'm fortunate enough to know, I know his parents really well, and, and I've seen this kid grow up, Torin, uh, who 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 took over. Uh, Love Torin. Yeah. Love Torin. I am yeah. so happy he's at Knots now. Like yeah. going through Grimoire and seeing him just tear it up. Like I knew what I knew what room he was in, so I take my time just walking through just to see him just demolish the groups yeah. in front of me and sometimes i'd even let people know because i'm like he's tearing it up i need to witness this this kid is just his energy is, is unlike anything i've ever seen um this kid mm -hmm. can go for hours within hours and probably go for like five days straight oh, and still yeah. be, have energy like this kid just give this kid a monster he's, on he's good a slider team too eternal nightmares like he's yeah. insane on there too yeah adored is somewhat i like happy that I got to this past year and I'm so like 
excited oh. to see where he's going in his haunt crew because he's he, full of potential. He made me laugh so hard uh, when it came time to us go through his maze. Uh, it, it was funny. He had just scared somebody, and he quickly saw me really mm-hmm. quick and re- quickly reset just so I could see him come out and scare. And it, at that point, you just feel like a proud older brother. You're just like, damn, you made it, bud. You're here. Like, mm-hmm. you I had to go by Grimoire twice because the first time I went through, he was like, he was more about like, Try to stay high to me and scared. Like you we we're more excited to see each other, so I didn't really get the scared experience. So like he turned around from scared this group and he's like, Shut bro, what the fuck is on? He didn't cuss, <laughs> but he's like, what is I'm getting in my face. And I'm like, This is great, but I need you to scare me, dog. And you're like, I'm coming back again. If you don't scare me, we're gonna have issues. <laughs> no, I'm coming back. I'll see you in like five minutes. But you know, it's and that's that I, I bring him up because he's an example of, of what's to come with the future of, mm-hmm. of Scary Farm. You know, there's a lot of you're going to get a lot of new faces coming and a mm-hmm. lot of people you've never seen before. A lot of people that, you know, have have always wanted to try this. A lot of new people from the streets, too. Yeah. And and I, I really hope Torrin yeah, lands. Like Michaela, Mother Roach, she is like Mother Roach is tearing it up. And I can't yeah. wait to see what you do when it goes down because this past year. I'm not really freaked out that much, like by hot. Like I'm a jumpy person, but it takes a lot to really like. Ugh. But just seeing her like slapping around, going down the dark, broken wow. kind of got me like. I ain't like lie. you. I almost, brought, I almost brought a can of raid with me. Like I was ready to go. Right, I'm like. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, but I I think that you know with with everything that you guys put together and i'm talking not just the lake i mean the lake's a huge part of of what was brought together too but you know everyone that was involved with the 50th whether you were you know on the show floor or whether you were you know backstage wherever you were you know it it, it, it's it's just it it was literally a vibe you had to be there to experience it and Mm -hmm. you know we could we could talk we could talk about it all day we can literally share all the stories we want but you had to be there. You really did. Like it, it really was really? a very special time in the haunt world. Not exactly. That's why, like, I kind of made it a thing to where each night I would try to run with at least every one of the zone for at least one scare, just to kind of savor it and be like, "Yeah, I scared with everyone fucking every night in the zone." Right. Then, of course, we all fall into our grooves, and we find the like certain people that we just click with and scared will keep coming through. I guess we're just running computers now. Yeah. Yeah, no, Matt so Matt told me a few good stories. Back. Yeah. Matt one hundred percent was like my number one running partner throughout this year. And then uh Jules, who was one of the female reapers, the really tall one that did the bird sounds a lot. That was, <laughs> them two are both people that we never talked about it. I think Matt in the beginning we would kind of be walking like want to get this person yeah let's get this person but then after like first five or six we would never talk about it it would just we would just suddenly be walking together like after scared someone's like okay there you are and then we just start bam 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 going in for people like the same exact time the same exact scream at the same tone like just matching each other Man, I, I, and I, I noticed that a lot in, in Forsaken this year. There was a lot of those, those moments mm-hmm. where it was like literally like you walked here and bam, a scare came out of here. And then you walked like a few feet and bam, a scare came out of here. And then you were walking and then bam, yep. both sides. I'm like, damn, you guys have this down to mm-hmm. a science up in here. Like, keep it going. Mm-hmm. And people would be like, how do you guys know that? And most of the time, it's instincts. It's just, that person, I'm get, going for that person. And because of Aunt Brain, we all see the same thing they're getting. It's like, yep, that one. Um, you know, with your character being so vocal this year, what was the biggest struggle around the mm. the no boo necklace? I know that was a, a very hot topic this season, and a lot of people liked them. They didn't like them. Like, there was a lot of pros and cons to it. Like, what was your overall experience with the boo ne- no boo necklace this year? Like, first like when i first heard about them i kind of was like everyone else like you just don't go to the fucking event, blah, blah, blah. but then after thinking about it i kind of understand why 
because you know if people have disabilities or if people just really want to enjoy the vibe but they just can't do the jump scares i get it so that's why every time i saw no boo necklace i would try and make it a thing to kind of slow down whatever i was doing and still engage them but not like scaring them like i'd still interact and try and have like a little convo or like get to know them a little bit most of the time they were not having it <laughs> just a sight of me a lot of the time because i would stop whatever i'm doing like smile do a little wave or like be like how you doing dolly you enjoying your night no they were not having, having it. Just nope. the sight of me or could i put in or could i put on teeth lacquer a lot and then mouth black smile mouth like nope. stay away yep little kids though they are brave because a lot of them will be like oh hi <laughs> they're ready to have a full yeah, conversation a lot of with you right now little oh yeah no kids are talking but i love it like i loved it every time i'd like wave at a kid with a no boot and they wave back and we just start going at it because they'd be like what's your name what are you doing here blah, blah, blah. just start asking questions and so like i'd go with it and kind of like ease them into it. Like, see, we're not that scary, but still snapping over and scaring people as we're talking just to make them laugh. Yeah. No, and then you see, like, I've talked to a lot of monsters that, you know, are, and I love seeing that. Like, that is such a great way to introduce a new generation, a younger generation, if, if they're mm -hmm. kind of, you know, in the middle of, of coming to this event. You know, that's a great way to really ease them into the event to mm -hmm. really show them that, like, you you guys, oh, absolutely. you're hanging with them, but then also, like, you're getting that scare. I've talked to so many people that, like, literally will stand there with people and be like, all right, who do you want me to scare next? And they'll point out that person and be like, all right, I got you. And then, you oh, know, yeah, I've, I've seen that. I'll do that. Sometimes I'd be like, do you want to scare with me? I have like them kind of trail next to me as I jump at someone. That's so great. I mean, I, I, I love that. And I'm not even lying. I think maybe I, I, I did this to a few, a few monsters this year. Cause it's just, it works well with my height, but I want to say one of the nights, maybe it was you. I know it was a few forsaken that done it, but one of the nights I literally just told you, just walk behind me. I'm like a human shield. They're not going to see you. <laughs> like I heard you say that to someone. I heard that, and yeah. I was like, he's right. That's true. Like, you can literally use me, and they would not even know. Like, I, I walk so perfect, <laughs> like, straight, and it's just like, yeah, just had behind me, and I guarantee you people are not going to expect that at all. And a lot of people did not expect it. I'm like, damn, they should pay me to work here now. Yeah. I've always said that I, me and me and Sammy would be perfect oh, yeah. as a distraction. I, Let me talk about Sammy, too. Sammy loved Forsaken, by the way. I, if he were here, he would tell you. Oh, yeah. I, I saw Sammy a lot going through, like, so, and I'd be like, oh, there he is. And so I'd yeah. always make sure to, like, every time I saw him, I made sure to really up the game, be like, all right, let me give you a little show really quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then, then I appreciate that because um, I know he only had those five days to experience all of the 50th, which, um, you know, it was a lot of time mm. to really to see everything. But, you know, with him living out of state, you know, he only had those five days with the, you know, not. So we made the most out of them. And I think a lot of people delivered and a lot of people really um, made the, his experience a, a, a memorable and a fun one. Uh, we've talked about it many times. And, uh, mm it's just so much fun to see what he thought about it. I mean, he was the one that really like started opening my eyes more to for forsaken. I'm like, dude, yeah. Forsaken is, is popping this year. Like it's, it's no question. Like this is, oh, it. Yeah. I, I love whatever he came through. Cause he had such a good energy about him. Yeah. Where, like, even if I were to scare him, where like, if I'm just doing shit in front of him, I turn around and just see his big bright old smile in the dark. I'm like, yep. That's the reason I keep doing this. Yep. He, he, he loved, uh, going to the event. And, and like I said, if he was here right now, he would, he would talk very highly of you and, and the lake too. And that's why I kind of did this whole month of just kind of doing that. You know, it, it was something where, you know, going back and kind of seeing everyone's response about who they wanted on the show and everything. I was like, man, there's so much that I can, that I can do. And I feel like there, the, you know, we just were talking about Forsaken Lake and I was like, how good it was. I was like, we need to talk to some of those people that were on there this past year that mm -hmm. made it that what it was. And, you know, to dedicate the whole oh, yeah. month right here of February to like a podcast a week to have another forsaken tale to be told, you know, and, 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 and to kind of market this whole forsaken takeover, you know, it's been, it's been so fun to really dive deep into that, to that world and to really 
chat with you guys about the lake because it, it is it's it, it really proved itself this year and and i uh, again it makes me excited to see what they have to bring next year what you guys have to bring next year and 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 years years ago until until they finally decide they want to retire and make it something else like i would love to see where this right. where this where the end game is for 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 forsaken to be honest with you honestly wholeheartedly agree because I feel like the lake has always been kind of the redheaded child of knots where people were aware of it, but no one really paid attention to it. But we got their attention this year. We kind of went from being this little, like, almost the chill zone that people know to be in the zone that is to be fun with. Like, we amped up the energy and the aggression, and we kind of have a cult following now to where I'm like, I'm excited to see where the lake goes like going from here, even if. I really hope not, but if this turns out to be like it's last year, we never know with Haunt. I really hope we like go out with bang because I feel like we're just getting started with the lake. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this year was was a was a very strong message mm-hmm. to say that, hey, this is essentially the official reboot of the lake. And mm-hmm. uh we're gonna we're gonna it do it bigger like better. That. Yeah. It honestly felt like that because we had I went from hearing stories again all stories and rumors nothing's confirmed because i don't know these people but i'd hear horror stories in passing of like oh yeah they chew out the lake and blah 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 watching every single one of the processions and then shouting us out over the radios park wide be like yo the lake is on fire right now it's as a monitor and a guest perspective it's really exciting to see and i'm like i hope they keep it soon because of us Man, I, 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 I don't, I mean, there's no words that could be put as to, you know, what this experience was like. You had to have been there. You really had to have been there. Like I can post all this footage that I have and it gives you a rough idea of what you would have saw or seen or heard in, in the lake this year. But, you know, it, you just had to be there in person. It was very special. And I think it was, uh, you know, the fact that it was the 50th, uh, everyone brought their A game. Everyone wanted to be there. Everyone wanted to celebrate with the oh, yeah. guests. You know, they wanted to be the best versions of themselves they could possibly be. And I feel like a lot of those mm-hmm. people that are that are just stepping out of that shell are just getting started. And like I said, like you, you yourself, I don't even think you're in your prime yet. You're still you're still going and watch when you get there it's it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna know like this is it this is prime me and like you're still you're still building that aggression up and and you you know we were talking about it today especially with you know your transition from mesmer to you know the streets on forsaken lake and kind of carrying that energy and bringing it and kind of manifesting it into this new character and and everything and 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 really showcasing what you're about Mm -hmm. and so i can't wait to see what happens with you with the 2024 season you know where you end up um and 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 how it and how it goes for you i feel like you really you put yourself out there big time this year and i feel like uh it wasn't it it didn't go unnoticed um whether you Mm. whether higher ups agree or not the fans say different you know there are a lot of videos of you out Mm. there on on tiktok and and you know all the youtube shorts and all this stuff and you see you know just all this footage from the lake and and whether or not you know, uh, management agrees yeah, with it or they did. It over. Yeah, it, it's 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 becoming something huge. And like I said, with 2024 coming up really quickly now, um, as far as haunt season goes, you know, it, 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 I'm excited to see what happens now. I mean, it's always that. Okay. How can they improve from last year? And how is this going to be a better, a bigger event than it was the year prior to that? And, you know, it, it, it's going to be a big challenge for Knots, I think, this year to really step up the game from 50 to now going into 51 to start that new next 50 years going into the new going, era. That's coming yeah. In. Yeah. Yeah. That new road to 100 now. And it's like, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome to mm. see it. You know, I may not be alive to see it, but I may be alive. Who knows? You know, who knows where Maybe. life will take me? I'm, I'm keeping the fingers crossed for another 50 years. I can, I can see the hundredth, but um, yeah, you know, it will be good. I think I'll take my my, my grandchildren. (laughs) I fully agree on that. No matter how much we talk about it and how much footage there is out there, it experience in the lake was like, and there's a lot of stuff that didn't even make footage this year, which I get, we're not working for film. We're working for the people that are there. 
So we're not focused on like, oh, is someone going to catch this on film? And that's not our job, nor should it, should it be. But right. there's a lot of stuff that was being like thrown around. We kind of called the last hour after Super Session Carnival Hour because that's where we kind of like the aggression was still there. But now we weren't as like, we we're more playful with people, so to say, instead of like super like, more like, now we're like, <laughs> let's go some fuck. Because, uh, there's some footage of like some of the shit we'd say out there. Like one of them was us screaming, Michael, don't leave me here. Michael. But there's a lot of stuff that I started saying that kind of caught on. And then I started hearing about everyone from around the park or other zones saying the same shit. And I'm like, all right. So uh, one of the big things was I would bring up to people. I mostly did this as a way to like, Whenever I see like a guest getting super aggro or like testing a monster as a way to kind of like humble them, so to say, you know, just get them back up so they leave us alone. I would just run up and go, I want to shake your ass. Shake my hand. I want to shake your ass. <laughs> because it always gets people off guard that they go from, like trying to bully a monster. Like, what are you doing? Take your the fuck and then i started using it as because i realized that startles people but it also gets that like reaction of hold on what and so there's some footage out there of that but i'm kind of like more with the amount of time we've seen it uh quattro was another one that i started right i will just run up to people and throw four fingers in their face and say quattro <laughs> I heard about the Quattro. I was going to ask you about that. That that that, that, that seems like something so random but so amazing. That would be a fun thing to just start saying because she's a child. She doesn't know how to really count. She can only right. count the Quattros. So. And to say it I love in Mac Spanish too. That's runner. that's the best. Mm-hmm. You know, I love like, Matt because he would run up and just right behind me go five, <laughs> keeping the number game going. And she's like, "No, I can only go up to four, mm-hmm. and I can only say it in Spanish." Mm-hmm. That and then uh, I would call people for it. I wouldn't call people foreheads, but I just point at people, and go my head. <laughs> like I'd play oh, into the little kid personality, just walk by people and look around all confused and go. <laughs> I get people to just go because what? of that. I'm like, love that. I'm like, what? And I know they're gonna forehead. go home to all their friends. Like, yeah, it's like, it's just a forehead. But I love that. No, they're probably going home. And be like, hey, yeah, I remember when that monster just called you a forehead? They're like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand what that was about. Was there something on my forehead that mm-hmm. night or something? Uh, oh man. Oh, and uh, then there was a respect. Respect the schmear was another one that got thrown around to where you managed our lead. Yes. Deed started saying it. I yeah, I had heard about that, and I even heard about the mm-hmm. banquet about he, him saying "fuck the schmear." Oh my god, yeah. So, um, I'm a part time mortician outside of Universal. Okay. You know, very fitting for the like reduced and so right. a little inside term to use is that. Them putting the makeup on a uh, body sometimes we call it the schmear right and so we'd be like hey, hey, hey. we're when you close the lid and so that was already kind of a thing and then there was a meme that was going around at the time too of some dude going into a bagel shop just going we're gonna have to back the schmear and so I'm like you know what it's we kind of use it as a funeral term I'm going to use as like, I'm going to use in like, it's like, it's a funeral term. <laughs> so I started going up to people. And, yeah. And then Jeez. it caught on to where Deet started saying it. And then he, he went on this whole tangent backstage where he was using smear. Like it was the word smurf and just started putting the things We're like, Oh, so can we call you Papa Schmeets from now? Man, I got I got so many nicknames hey, he, for that guy. He ran with it all season, and then banquet. 
that got the award for best influencer for starting all the shit amongst monsters. Man, First thing I, I, he said was, <laughs> the schmear is dead. The schmear. And I held up my award as if this proof that the schmear is a lie. <laughs> no, I, I got so many nicknames for that guy. And then now, now that oh, I know geez. that he's, he's going to, he's going to hate me for that. I'm like, you, you better hate your, your 2023 freaking forsaken late cast. Cause they're the ones that oh, still the means. He put up with so much shit, but I love he's him. Why, I, I, I could promise you this right now. <laughs> he's watching this episode. So you could say hi to oh, him. Cause I know for a fact he's watching. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. He is uh he is a very uh he's the pebble. We we call him the pebble, you know, because he looks Pebbles. like a, a small version of the rock. So he's the pebble. The pebble was thrown about my stage sometimes. That that one's funny. I'm like I'm like, you you may you may you may look like a small version of the rock, but uh I'll still hit your ass with a choke slam and win. <laughs> My God, man! You're gonna show up at your house the next day, like you were saying. He he probably would. He knows. Gonna hear the slider gloves on the walls. I'm like, what do you think? I'm scared of you, buddy. I think I'm scared of a little pyro. Uh, I love Deets, man. He he's such. He did a good job this year uh, with you guys as well as Jeremy. I mean, leading that procession and just kind of making it what it was, and and then kind of teaming together. They they were. A, a great team um and and i remember talking to them every time i'd go through the zone to see how everything was going and you know some nights were harder than others but they did a very good yeah. job keeping the professionalism alive and and bearing through with it oh, i know man. that it's you know it's not the easiest but i'm glad that they they did the, they took on the challenge oh, yeah. and they and they overcame it so that's that's really cool oh yeah no they had a lot on their plate this year and they had a lot of people breathing down their necks this year but they were some best leads and just best superiors i've ever had in sense like they were very on top of things like they were paying attention to all of us and making sure we were on top of our game they would even check in on us hey are you all right you look like you're having a lot like do you need a break do you need water and even if we were fucking up or like it's scary and working too well, they'd pull us aside and be like, hey, this is good, but why are you doing this? Like Friday the 13th, that was probably one of the busiest nights of all this year because right. it's Friday the 13th. Deets pulled me aside and said that, yeah, your scares are great, but you're getting really close to people's faces with yours. And I'm really worried about you getting hit. I know you're okay with taking that risk, like getting that close, but I don't want to win your risk. Try using like your hands or like something else to keep some distance. Right. And you know, I took his advice and I went with it. And I changed up my game and my approach and how I scared people. And turned out I got some of the best scares because of his guidance. And just caught they were never on our ass about it. Like they wouldn't pull us aside and talk to us unless we were really decent up. Or unless you we see that like almost there about like crack something, you need that little extra oomph. So one hundred percent some of the best leads. Yeah, and, and you know, them two coming from, like you said, they have that history of of just being at the haunt and and being there mm -hmm. and, and being part of some of the most iconic things, you know, Ghost Town being one of them, obviously. Um, and then taking that torch and kind of finally passing it down, you know, Jeremy yeah. You know, when I first started really going to haunt more often in 2019, he was obviously one of the pick yeah. twins. And now to see him in a yeah. management role was just a huge transition for me of like, wow, dude, like you took this role on and he he rightfully and he rightfully got an award for it. And I and I was no. so happy for him, yeah. dude. Like, 100%. That was awesome. Yeah, he I think that's also why they were well as leads because they've been just for so long. So they understand what we go. They they get it one hundred percent. Like they understand the bad nights and there's times when we're just you monsters get fed up with shit. We just deal with one too many like gas that send us over the edge. And because right. they know what it's like to be there, they know how to like consult to be like, yeah, it sucks, but you know, why are you here? Right. Not in a bad sense of like why are you here, but like you're here because you want to make a difference. Like, don't let 
these few like bad apples ruin your whole experience here. Like right, you're making man. a difference and people are like telling us that we're making a difference. So don't let that ruin it for you. They were always like super encouraging and listen and just listen to us. And I really appreciate them for that. And so they oh, would, yeah. I will always say they deserve their flowers. There you go. At the end of the day, what, what better gift than that? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, now looking towards the future man i mean the future is always uh unwritten unknown you know we don't know what's going to happen yeah. come a few months down the line when auditions come around or not but um what's the what's the future for you looking like man do you do you do you want to continue to build off that legacy that you started in forsaken do you got plans to go elsewhere like what what does it look like for you in the future i am not picky i will happily take wherever you answer because again, I'm just going to work the event, but I really would like to retire the lake. I want to like close that zone out and like be able to like close it out with this character I made for us. Because again, like you said, I feel like I was just really getting my bearings and getting my feet wet with her, and sort of near the end of the season, when I really got a feel of all right, I really know how to work with this character and the three personalities. And so I just want to write that as much as possible. So I 100% would love to close out the lake. Yeah. That'd be a really great experience, man. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you guys, you you know, like I I keep saying to this podcast and if I can end it on a high note with this one is like, you guys, you guys did something and and really turned the tide of that zone uh, this season. Uh, And what better, what better year to do it than for the 50th, you know, and, and really bring out that energy like everyone else did. And uh, you guys really proved a whole new stomping ground of why Forsaken Lake is what it is and why it should be taken as serious as the other as the other zones and and Mm -hmm. you know it really it really showed this year i mean if i'm finding myself going there more times than i have in the past you know that tells you that i want to go back and see what chaos is brewing inside forsaken lake um but it was probably the first time the lake has ever been like to guess because there's been times in mission row where you you would walk through and it's nonstop scares left and right that entire just walk through. Yeah, no. And, and I love that dude. Like you, you, you knew going down there that there was always going to be something mm-hmm. unless you happen to be, you know, going while you guys were setting up for procession. That was always, always a whole different thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But you know, for the most part, you know, if you went in the right times and, and you walk through the, the lake, you know, you were going to get those scares and you know, You're whether gonna you were God going through the lake. Yeah, whether you whether you were the one getting scared or the one just enjoying the scares, like mm. it, you were gonna see something that was that was a promise and a guarantee that was always delivered and stamped mm. with approval right there. So, yeah, and that's I, I what really, we shot for this year. Yeah, I mean, I I appreciate the hell out of you guys. I know Sammy had a great time. My girlfriend loved going to the lake. You know, it was just a it was just an amazing time at Haunt this year. What a, what a time to be a freaking a Haunt fan. You know, like the energy is unreal and it's just you guys continue to build on that and i can't like i said i can't wait to see what happens you know in, in 2024 uh, for this haunt season there's so much that uh like i said that there's still some untold stories that need to be told and uh mm. we need to we need to we need to give the like the proper send off that it deserves and what better way to, yeah, to do if that it's gonna go it needs it needs a funeral yeah, a hundred percent. We got to do that one last big funeral for the lake. But you know, it's mm. one of those things where, like, I, I, I really now I really want to see what you know the people that were there to hopefully return and and build off what they what they mm. built last season. You know that that's what I'm looking forward to the most is to see what you guys come up with. That's something new. That's something that's like more improved. Like I don't know. It's it for me. I'm very biased when it comes to this kind of thing. Cause like, I don't, I think you guys are perfect the way you are, but I know everyone critiques themselves, you know, based on their, how they, you know, how they think and stuff. So like, for me, it was just, it's really hard to see any flaws within the lake. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I wasn't there all eight hours every single night, but the time that I was there, I was, I was always blown away. I was always impressed. I always had some good footage to catch and I always caught something that was memorable. So appreciate all you guys for that. Oh yeah. I agree. Oh yeah, I agree. I don't think there's any flaws within the lake either. I feel like everyone was just constantly on top of their game and all of us were constantly pushing towards this goal of making the lake a force to be reckoned with. And so to hear that we accomplished that from 
people like you and just other guests that came through. It's like heartwarming. It's heartwarming indeed, man. Well, with that being said, I have to ask now the hardest question of the podcast. Um, mm-hmm. But it might not be too hard for you because, you know, you're a well-established horror fan. But, you know, we'll see where it goes. Um, what's your favorite horror movie of all time? Oh, it honestly switches on a week to week basis, but I feel like the one, the one I keep going back to a lot is Suspiria, the nineteen seventy nine one. Ooh, okay, that's a, that's a deep cut. I don't really I hear am, too many people talking about. I love, oh, I love the aesthetics and like the visuals of it and the soundtrack and just it's one of the like perfect movies to me. <laughs> there, there's another movie I think that I think it's by that same director called Phenomena. Yeah, I just anything Dario Argento, I love. I legit bought that movie because it has my all-time favorite Iron Maiden song in it, which is Flash of the Blade. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. holy shit. Like, this is amazing. Like, I will literally, I literally, I've never seen the whole film. I've literally only watched that scene numerous times. I have no idea what's going on, but it sounds awesome with the music. So I just keep watching it. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. His yeah. score that he puts it in is fucking phenomenal yeah man i mean such a great director especially within that more like yeah. that european horror scene you know like to really kind yeah, of like translate really that. niche italian horror like the yeah. super bright visuals yeah yeah and to bring that kind of style over to the states you know it, i don't think he realized mm-hmm. it would become such a cult hit that it did today so yeah that's that's a good choice very, very good choice very good um oh yeah with all that being said, man, where can where can everyone find you on socials to keep up with you? I know that you got big things in the works. Uh, hopefully, we see you back in the in the twenty twenty four season, um, and, and see you back on the lake. Uh, where can people follow you to uh, to keep to keep informed? Of course, my Instagram is at lobotomy. It's spelled all weird, so it's L A B O T O M I E. I, I every time I think of lobotomy, the only thing that comes to mind is the uh, the Ramones song "Teenage Lobotomy." Yeah, mm-hmm. it's one of my favorites. I like a lot. Lobotomy. I've had some people call it like "Labotomy." Hey, it sound a little like a uh, little right. European there. Labotomy. <laughs> um, no, I, I I love I, yeah I love uh, I'm, I'm a huge Ramones fan, so the Ramones are goaded. Yeah, um. But yeah, dude, I, I I can't wait to see where you end up. I think you got such a bright future, bright haunt career ahead of you. And like I said, you're just getting started. You know, who's to say down the line we see you with some pads on and let's see what that firecracker turns into a damn freaking Who knows? M80 mortar. You know Who, what I mean? Like Who knows? Who, that's gonna who be knows? I might also we got a certain uh spring break festival oh. Oh. at a certain mountain. Who knows? How many flags do they have? <laughs> I don't know, maybe about two more than Quattro. Two more than Quattro. I love that. that was two great. more than Quattro. Got to get it in before. <laughs> uh, like I said, follow follow Lex on, on social and you might find out what that may be if you didn't crack the code already. Um, I'll but just leave it at that. Let's just leave it at that. With all that being said, though, uh, I, we appreciate you coming on and talking about the lake with uh, the Forsaken Takeover. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure doing this. Uh, on, Papa. Oh man, you made it, man! You 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 made it on the Mindless Four podcast, and and I can't I can't wait to see uh, what you do. And, and again, you're always welcome back on the show to talk your your haunt career, um, and everything, man. So yeah, man, just keep doing you and and keep being the better the best version of you, because uh, I guarantee you, you you you're probably one of these days are finally gonna drop me, and that will be the biggest mission success right there in my career, at least. I'll be like, someone drop me. Twenty twenty four goal now. There it is. You gotta, you gotta give it your all. I'm gonna be like, okay, that's something's the goal gotta now. Go. Yeah, that's it. The mm-hmm. target's already painted. And we're, 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 we're solidifying it today. Um, yeah. But I, I thank you guys so much, and I thank you uh, for for bringing the the lake to life and and bringing it to its to its true glory. Um, and I can't wait to see what 2024 holds for the next chapter. Uh, we're only getting started, and uh, we got a lot to write still. Um, but with all that being yeah, said, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate everything you've done. Of course. I'm going to continue to keep doing it because there's so many stories to be told out there and I want to hear them all. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but with all that being said, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with a bell notification to be where every time I put up a new video so you can hear more podcasts like these. And we got a bunch of other podcasts from the past that you can go listen to. Some of your favorite monsters we've interviewed or just some, you know, up and coming monsters that have experiences. Like if you're scared in the haunt industry to join all that stuff, there is so many information and so many great uh, people to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Lex is one of them. I mean, he talked about his, 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 We're all uh, just normal people in the end. We just put on a silly little costume once a year. Yep, that's it, man. Uh, so yeah, check them out. There's so many, so much, such great advice on there, and such great stories that you get to hear. And and I hope you guys enjoy them. But with all that being said, until next time, stay spooky. <laughs>